Universal's newest land has a soft opening today, including their brand new restaurant. I'm gonna eat everything there. All of it. But I already saw. It's gonna be great. Come on. In Universal Studios, the first land you walk into when you enter the park is getting rethemed to Minion Land. Uh, it's currently under construction, as you can see by some of these construction walls, but it's gonna have an all new attraction, as well as a bunch of new dining areas. And some of that is open today. So we're gonna check it out. All right, first thing that I noticed is there are some construction walls down around the Villain Con Minion Blast attraction. The attraction is not open yet, it's opening this summer, uh, but a lot of stuff is open. Tons of construction walls down on the next street. Basically the whole land is visible now when it wasn't before. Uh, this here, this Illumination Theater, is a new minion meet and greet, where you can meet with two of the minions. Uh, the Bake My Day Bakery is right here, and there are folks working inside. I'm not sure it'll open today, but the minion cupcake, give it to me. I hope they serve this cupcake. Continuing down, we've got Freeze Ray Pops, which is an ice pop stop. And look, the ice pops are in the window. They look amazing. But uh, it's not open yet, but it looks like it might open up today, which would be pretty awesome. Um, Bank of Evil, I think, is just a facade here. Who needs to go to a bank on your theme park day? And then we've got the Creme de la Creme Minion Cafe. There's also the popcorn place that we'll check out, but Minion Cafe is our priority. There's already quite a line. So I think we're gonna hop in line and get some Minion food for breakfast. I'm ready. Okay, I'm in line at Minion Cafe. The menu is scrolling over here and it's got desserts, kids meals, um, despica bowls, handhelds, and an off the flame section. Lots for us to try. There's a Minion that appears to have done something very wrong over here. I get it, that would be me, honestly. And then some like pipes, shooting papers and bananas around the ceiling in the waiting area, but uh, I'm waiting in line. I just heard that it is mobile order only, so we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get inside. The cafe has a couple of different dining rooms. There is limited outdoor seating, but most of the dining rooms are gonna have different themes to them. There's a dining room for Stuart, for Bob, and for Otto. Uh, we are here, I believe, in Otto's dining room, looking at some pet rocks. Um, yeah, Bob here in the middle is gonna be teddy bear focused, of course. And then Otto, not Otto, Stuart. And then Stuart is our rock star with the different rock and roll vibes. Cause of course, he's a rock star. It is what it is. Hey, I'm in Minion Cafe, I got a table. Um, so you can see the walk-in video, I'll play it while I'm talking. Uh, you walk right into the kitchen where the Minions are working, it's very cute. Um, there's a lot of like noises and stuff I can hear. I went straight to a table because I wanted to make sure I could get seated and get our food ordered. But we're gonna check out all the atmosphere, don't worry. Once I sat down, one of the human minions, I, I don't think they're minions, I think they're just humans who work here, came and brought me silverware and uh, it's all mobile order. So I'm gonna go ahead and mobile order. So mobile order does take place in the Universal app, but there is also a QR code on the table to help with mobile order. And every single table has one of those QR codes that you can grab. Mobile order place, it's super easy. You just put your order in in the Universal app and then they bring the food right to your table because you put your table number in. So it's very, very easy to mobile order. Here are our drinks. So here we've got the Antidote, which is a banana flavor beverage with minion colored toppings and graham cracker crumbles. They say it tastes like a banana cream pie. And then here we have the PX41 Punch, which is a lemonade with flavors of kiwi and strawberry, an evil minion colored topping, and blue raspberry pop rocks. Both of these are $6.99, so they're about $7, and neither are alcoholic. All right, minion cheers. Okay, the drink itself is pretty weird. It tastes like a banana, but kind of like a watery down Laffy Taffy banana that's carbonated. I don't love it, and I like Laffy Taffy banana. However, if you actually get a sip up top near the whipped topping, it tastes a lot more like a banana cream pie. I think this is gonna be more kid geared for sure, um, but it's so cute. You can't argue that that's adorable. For our PX41 punch, evil minion. Ooh, that's more my speed. So this is a lemonade with kiwi and strawberry flavors. It's not, it's sweet, but it's not like overly super sweet. It's not cloying. Um, and it's not very tart at all. I'm mostly tasting the strawberry. I wanna say it tastes kind of like a strawberry drink. I'm not even getting very much lemonade, but it's pretty, it's pretty good. I mean, I still think we're kid geared. It kind of tastes like a sweet tart, like a candy. The topping is very weird. That's kind of a flavor I can't place. Like almost crazy. But I do love Pop Rocks on a specialty drink, so I say that the PX41 Punch is better than the Antidote, but both of them are more kid gear. All right, these are the Despicables. 
Uh, I'm missing one, but I'll get that in a bit. We have El Matcha Salsa y Salsa Ropa Vieja. We've got Carl's Crispy Cauliflower, Stewart's Szechuan Surprise, Otto's Noodle Bowl, Lucy's Secret Salmon, and Agnes's Honeymoon Soup. Those are our bowls. I'm missing one, but I will be sure to grab in a bit. Here we have the handhelds and the one option that's in the Off the Flames category. Here we have the mini Minions meals. These are, of course, the kids' meals. We've got Mini Boss's Mega Melt, Fridonia Festival Mac and Cheese. Of course, these come with the Minion Tots. Shrunken Moon Bowls with Flying Sauce and Mr. Gru's PB and J. For the desserts, we've got the Fluffy Unicorn Cupcake, the Minion Swiss Roll, and Otto's Pet Rock, which is so cute. <laughs> Good news, we got the missing Kevin's Choppa Choppa Salad and the Bob's Teddy Bear Cream Puff. If something like that happens, you can just let a team member know and they'll head back to the kitchen and get it fixed. So this is literally everything on the, on the menu at the Minion's Restaurant. I know what you're thinking, Quincy, you can't possibly eat all that food. You'd be 100% correct, which is why I brought so much Tupperware. I have a game night tonight and I'm serving dinner and Minions Cafe is catering. So my Dungeons and Dragons friends, look forward to some Minion food. So I'm just gonna go right down the menu and start packing stuff up as I go so that they can come get plates because my table is full. But uh, let's get started with Kevin's Chapa Chapa salad. It's a pretty exciting salad. It's got pork belly, rotisserie chicken, there's edamame in there. It's all covered in a mustard ale vinaigrette and it has the green banana chips, AKA plantain chips, which you'll see are a bit of a big feature on this menu. Why is this fork so big? Okay, this is a really good salad. I think the dressing's a little mild. I can taste that it's mustardy, which I appreciate. There's not a lot going on to it. That said, I think it's, ooh, that was actually a really good bite of the um, vinaigrette on that cucumber. I will say, in general, a very perfectly portioned salad. Right amount of pork belly, right amount of chicken, right amount of arugula. There's corn. I like the addition of the plantain chips. I think I would break them up over the salad probably, but let's see how they taste in general. Tastes like plantain chips. If you haven't had plantain chips, they taste, they taste kind of like greenish, generic fruit flavor, dried fruit flavor. So I recommend trying if you can. In general, this salad's awesome. For the El Macho dish, we've got braised beef, cilantro rice with salsa and those El Macho tostones. Let's give it a try. Big fan of the braised beef. Super tender, very, very flavorful. The salsa even adds to it. Totally melts in your mouth. Not spicy at all, which I think makes it a little more like wide scope. I would like a little bit of spice here, but it's fine. I'm gonna try the tostone. It's not the best tostone. Kind of hard to chew through, honestly, because of their shape. So where it gets thin, it's very hard to like, very overly chewy. Not bad, and I think goes well with the meal. And really what they're there for is to look cute, so. We're okay with it. And I'm a fan of cilantro rice. It's like very, very well seasoned. It's not quite perfectly cooked. But again, it's soft opening, so that's probably not indicative of what you'll get. That bite was well cooked. Maybe I got a weird bite. All right, here we have Carl's crispy cauliflower. These are crispy cauliflower florets. We've got cilantro, blue cilantro rice, um, a spicy chili sauce, some Thai cucumber, and some edamame. I'm very excited for this one. This is right up my alley. This is a winner. The sauce is just a little bit spicy. The outside of the cauliflower is super, super crispy. And there's awesome, like perfectly hooked cauliflower in the middle. The blue coconut rice is really, really tasty. And I love Thai cucumber, so I'm thrilled this is an option. I absolutely would get this meal again for sure. It's light, but it seems like it would be filling for a theme park day. Favorite thing so far. We've got Lucy's Secret Salmon, uh, which comes with a lipstick taser of sauce, which is very funny. I'm excited about this one because Lucy's my favorite character because she looks like me. Loving the salmon. Um, it's a little, it's perfectly cooked um, and it's got like just really good, really like, full and hearty salmon flavor to it. The sauce is a really nice glaze on it, but I'm really glad it came with the extra little sauce because I didn't think there was quite enough. Granted, I'm a sauce meme, so you know what it is. I was obsessed with these Thai cucumbers. I know I said that on the last one, but I literally would eat an entire bowl of just these. The edamame also has like kind of a sweetness to it. But I will say that the blue rice um, isn't overly coconutty. I'm not a huge fan of coconut rice, and I still think that like the coconut is there, but it doesn't overwhelm this rice. Otto's noodle bowl is definitely one of the more unique, unique ones. We've got porchetta, there's corn here. This is a shrimp dumpling, egg, tonkatsu broth, and then udon. So this is definitely a more Asian inspired dish and we'll see, I'm not, I love Asian noodle dishes, but I'm not traditionally into theme park Asian noodle dishes. So we'll have to see. Trying out a little bit of everything. 
the noodle bowls surprise me. I actually think that they've done a pretty good job with this. I wouldn't say it's an on the nose like udon bowl, like you might be used to if you do eat a lot of Asian food. However, the flavors are pretty good. It's got like a really nice tonkatsu broth. The udon is the right thickness. It's the right kind of noodle. A little starchy for my taste, but with all of the other stuff, you can't really tell. The borchetta adds like a really nice richness note. My shrimp dumpling, flavor-wise, very good. It's a little on the tough side. Now, mine has been sitting um, because I have a lot of food, but uh, so it might not be the case, but I'm a little bit on the tough side. And the egg was pretty good as well. Overall, I actually think this is a pretty well-rounded dish. Not my favorite, and I think gonna be a little more challenging than a lot of the others, but I'm surprised by it. I just burped, and that was good for me because my stomach <laughs> space is dwindling. I am packing it up as I go, though. Here's my current one, and then I've got two already completely full to the side. Usually I would have help for a meal like this, but everybody was busy today, so I'm doing it solo, um, which is great. For sure, super great and good and fun. Um, I'm actually enjoying it. I'm gonna eat for like a week, probably after I serve my whole D&D group though, so that's pretty great. So Otto's chicken is literally just Szechuan glazed uh, rotisserie chicken, and it's like a half chicken. This is a huge portion, along with some vegetable lo mein, which it looks like that's the udon noodles again. Another Asian-inspired one here. I'm really, really impressed with the glaze. I think the glaze is awesome. I usually associate like Szechuan food with spicy. This is not overly spicy. It's kind of like a sweeter, stickier glaze that a lot of people would like. The chicken itself is a little on the dry side, kind of like a grocery store rotisserie chicken, if that helps. Then the vegetable uh, lo mein, definitely udon and not like for the regular lo mein noodles. Um, really like, I really like the noodles, honestly. They're super chewy and delicious, and they're the same noodles as the noodle soup, but because they have like, they've been like dressed differently or prepared differently, you can't taste the starkiness as much. And also there's a bit of like a surprising kind of smokiness to the uh, veggies, which is awesome um, and kind of surprising. I personally wouldn't get this because of how dry the chicken is, but I think if you're really craving chicken, if you're really like fresh one glaze, and if you have a really big coat, you can eat this. I'm very, very excited to try Agnes's Honeymoon Soup because I love soup. This is a green tomato soup. It's got basil oil. A little splotch of red was a tomato gummy bear. Um, there's pork belly, and then it's served with a pimento grilled cheese, which is on the like waffle pressed bread. I'm on the fence about this. The soup itself, surprisingly, has a little bit of like meat to it in a very satisfying way. Very savory, very tomato-y. Goes great with the pork belly. It's a little over salted for my taste. And I've actually been really pleasantly surprised that everything has been like exactly the right amount of salted until this. Um, this pimento grilled cheese dipped in it though, oh my gosh. I take back what I said, on a cooler day, I would go for this over the noodle bowl. But, kind of on the fence here. All right, we're on to the handhelds with Uncle Drew's pork sandwich. Belly filling pork sandwich, excuse me. We've got a porchetta on here. There's an apple jam, chimichurri, mustard. Really a lot going on here. Not apple jam. Wait, apple jam and bacon jam. A lot, literally like a lot going on here. So we're gonna give it a try. See how it tastes. Also comes with the green banana, aka plantain chips. It's a sweet Hawaiian pretzel bun, which adds a sweetness to it I wasn't expecting. Honestly, the flavors are very complex because you got the bacon and arugula in there and the apple jam and the mustard aioli and the chimichurri. A lot of sauces, a lot of flavors. Porchetta isn't my favorite type of meat because it is a little fatty and I'm very anti-fat when it comes to meat. But incredibly flavorful sandwich, incredibly savory. And I think it might not be the most like wide of audience pleasing because it does have such unique flavor. But if you're looking for something that is like aggressively savory and has some interesting like notes to it, I would go for this one. Just be warned that since there's so much going on, there could be something off-putting about it to you. So now we've got the steak and cheese ray sandwich. We have French onion dipped uh, roast beef on here. There's tons of cheese sauce and it either comes with a cheese ray uh, of extra cheese sauce for ya. It's pretty hard to go wrong with like roast beef smothered in cheese sauce, frankly. And uh, this is no different. I'm actually really glad they have this steak sandwich here because they had something very similar for the holidays over in Seuss Landing. And I loved it. So it's just pile tie with roast beef, cheese, kind of like an Arby's roast beef sandwich, which feels like an insult, but I, I like Arby's. So it's not. Um, just very thinly cut roast beef. I can taste that French onion like flavor to it. Um, I love the amount of cheese sauce and the fact that there's extra cheese sauce 
even better. So I get this again for sure. Just warning, this one's gonna be on the heavier side for a hot beef park day. Mel's Meatball Mountain is actually a stuffed pizza. Mine's a little toasty, but I think it's still gonna be good. It's got meatballs in it and on it. There's fresh mozzarella in and on it and basil and marinara. And this actually looks kind of amazing. And it's a huge portion. And the presentation made it look like it had fallen onto the plate, which was very fun. So it's a huge portion, massive. Absolutely the most shareable thing on this menu. I think two, maybe three people could share this. It is so big. I could eat a quarter of this and probably be satisfied for my meal. Um, love the fresh mozzarella and the meatballs are really good they're kind of basic meatballs but they're still delicious and you can't really go wrong with marinara mozzarella meatballs and basil even the crust looks burnt it doesn't actually taste burnt so that might just be how the bread cooks i'm a big fan i would have i would have to get this again this is definitely up there for one of my favorites maybe not beating the cauliflower but it's for sure up there um i was a meatball sub kid if you're a meat if you were a meatball sub kid you you're gonna like this all right, our first of the kids meals is Mini Boss's Mega Melt. This is a pimento cheese grilled cheese, like the one that came on the side of the soup. There's a mini banana here and there are Minion Tots. I love that there's different ones. Like some have one eyes and some have two, just like the Minions. I'm trying Minion Toppers. These remind me of Smiley Fries from Buffalo Wild Wings. Is that who has those? They're not really tots. The inside is like, it's like the inside of a French fry. Like more of a mashed potato texture than like a shredded potato texture. Very tasty though, super crispy on the outside. I don't I don't see people being very disappointed with these, especially kids, kids will love them. I'm from North Carolina, so I think I'm obligated to love uh, pimento cheese like this. And pimento cheese in like a press together, like waffle iron, delicious toasty. This is so good. Make sure your kid likes pimento cheese before you get this, because it's not just the standard grilled cheese. If they don't like the pimento flavor, they're not gonna like this. Um, but if they do like pimento cheese, get them this. My brother's a, like weirdly into pimento cheese, so he would like this. Of course, kiddos get the Fredonia Festival mac and cheese, and there's a white cheddar cheese sauce on these. I love white cheddar shells. Elite type of mac and cheese, so I'm excited to try. Pretty basic white cheddar mac and cheese. Tastes a little bit like Annie's white cheddar shells, if you've had that. One of my favorite mac and cheeses. Um, not quite as good, but honestly, actually maybe it is as good. The cheese sauce is a little thicker in this, so. I think your kid is gonna love this. I think if your kid wants shells, mac and cheese, they've got it here at Minions Cafe, and it comes with the Minion Toss. What more can you want? Just carbs on carbs. Spoon balls and flying sauce is just a little spaghetti, which I think is a great option too for picky eaters. Honestly, the great thing about the kids' meal sizes is that they are like, they can, they're still pretty good lunch sizes, except for maybe the PB and J for a grown up, and they're cheaper. And they come with Minion Toss. All right. Spaghetti meatball time. Pretty basic, but I think that's the point of this. It's supposed to be basic. It's the same good meatballs from the uh, Meatball Mountain, um, which I, I'm like a big fan of these meatballs. Again, they're basic. They're not the best meatballs ever, but I like them. Spaghetti is perfectly hooked at Salcente. Yeah. It's a nice basic marinara sauce. I think this is really gonna make picky eater kiddos happy, and if you've got a picky eater adult, might be a good one to go for. We've got the PB&J, which is very small, but it does come with the mini tots and the mini banana. Um, and also it's cute. It's like an Uncrustable. Emma would love this. She loves Uncrustables. I am losing steam. I think I told you that already, like six dishes ago. But boy, leftovers check in. I don't even know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes of leftovers. I'm gonna fill all nine that I brought. Which is pretty miraculous that I brought the exact right amount. Jay, I wish I could just buy this. Like I don't need the sides, so like walking through here and just like 250 for this, I'd buy it. That's like a little snack. What I was doing, like a scavenger hunt, something needed a little pick me up. Do this. That's what we made it to dessert. Okay, we've got our unicorn cupcake, which truly is a cake in a cup. It is confetti cake with um, bubble gum and vanilla icing and a chocolate unicorn horn. I really love confetti cake, so I'm excited about this. And look at how good it looks. The bubble gum icing is a little overpowering, um, but there's not too much of it, so you can kind of go around it. And the cake, unfortunately, is a little bit on the dry side, especially considering it's in the cup. I think maybe in my brain I was expecting more moist. However, I will say, I think it's pretty good. I think that the taste is fine enough to warrant like getting it for the novelty. It's just really vanilla-y, kind of basic cupcake, but very cute. Uh, who doesn't love a puppy unicorn? It's so fluffy, I think I'm gonna die. Now we've got the Minion Swiss Roll, which has a pineapple cardamom ganache with the yellow sponge cake, and then this, 
is a chocolate shell around a passion fruit banana. So this is actually kind of a more grown-up dessert, which sort of surprised me, whereas the unicorn cupcake's more kid. This is good. I like this Swiss roll a lot. I'm not the biggest fan of the passion fruit banana, but I don't like passion fruit, so that's on me. If you like passion fruit, you'll probably like this. It's like a passion fruit mousse. It was really light. In fact, even though I'm so full that I can literally feel my pants like pushing against my me. <laughs> Um, this is still light enough that I like want to eat it. A particular theme park dessert, and I think it's the cutest and most recognizable of the four desserts, with the little minion face. So this is my winner so far, but I still have two more desserts to try. And then we've done it, folks. Bob's Teddy Bear Cream Puff is this cute little chocolate cream buff, and he's filled with a whipped chocolate ganache. I'm not a big chocolate person, but I am a cream puff fan. I do like this. It's got a little bit of like that kind of cocoa, like true cocoa powder flavor to it more than chocolate. It's not really rich, which I like. So if you're, if you're not wanting like a super rich dessert, don't expect a super rich cream puff here. Tons of filling, which is awesome. And like all the other desserts, super cute. So fan of it. Pretty, pretty impressive desserts actually. And our final dessert is the one I'm most excited for, this Otto's Pet Rock. It is a peanut butter, strawberry, and banana dessert. So kind of like a PB&J vibe. Uh, it's a mousse in there, so let's give them a try. This is my favorite dessert. It's like a peanut butter. It was super light and hairy. It didn't stick to every surface in your mouth. The banana cake is a really thin layer, but it just adds a really nice texture element. And I thought the strawberry was going to be overwhelming because it's that big block in the middle. It's not at all. It's like a really like light flavor to it. And it's all wrapped up so nicely in the, in the little rock. I don't know. This is my favorite dessert. Might be one of my favorite things I had. My winners are going to be the Meatball Mountain, the Cauliflower, and the Rock. So we were eating over in the dining room, but you can also eat here in the kitchen where you can see the Minions cooking, <laughs> along with a lot of their banana-themed cooking equipment. And then the other eating space is actually the Minions break room. So the Minions break room, like any good break room, has a bulletin board, some posters, and of course, motivational posters. And there's even the Minion lockers, where you can see some of their belongings, like just bananas. What is happening there? Got a nice filing cabinet for their use. And then even the vending machines, where the Minions can get stuff out of during their break. All right, now that we've done it, and I have this very heavy, very full bag of leftovers, uh, let's check out the rest of the new Minions land that has at least partially opened today. So just outside Minion Cafe is Pop and Nana, which is a new sort of popcorn stand here in Minions land. They have popcorn, but they also have banana popcorn. Now I can't eat popcorn, so I cannot give this a try, but uh, hopefully next time I'm here with Emma or someone, they can give us give it a try and let you know how it tastes. Uh, you also can get the antidote and the PX41 punch out here, as well as the banana bread beer. That's so fun. I'll have to try that. I love beer that has banana notes. Minion Cafe still has a good bit of a line going, unsurprisingly so. And it does look like Bake My Day and Freeze Ray Pops has opened. New conflict in this video is will this Aldi bag survive the literal pounds of leftovers in here? I, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. There is a new Minion selfie popcorn bucket that takes an actual selfie. So you can see that um, in the video I just took. That's wild. Uh, it's about $30 without popcorn, so pretty expensive, but very cute. We want to wrap up our day at Freeze Ray Pops, because I definitely want to try one, but I need to digest a bit from all that food I just had. But I think we're going to head and Bake My Day, which is the new Minion-themed bakery. I made it into Bake My Day. This is a very cute merchandise shop. It smells so sugary and sweet in here. There's tons of sweets-themed Despicable Me merchandise, which is super cute. And then there is a bakery case. Now the stuff in here is pretty standard kind of treats that they have all around Universal, just minion themed. So there's macarons and caramel apples and pieces of marshmallow sandwiches and cookies and things like that. Lots of fluffy unicorn, lots of minion merch, lots of Bake My Day specific merch. The really fun detail in here is that there's a minion shooting a, another minion into the ceiling with like gummy arrows, which is very cute. All right, so made it out of Bake My Day. Definitely more of a merchandise spot than a food service spot, but they do have that bakery case. So if you're looking for something sweet and mini-me, they've got you covered. Uh, good news, they do have an overall outfitters. They are closed, weirdly, but overall is one size fits all minions, I guess. 
Uh, I did find out that Illumination Theaters is not just Minions. It also has other Illumination characters. I've seen characters from Sing out here today. Uh, but they come out pretty much every hour, which is pretty cool. You might try to catch them before I head out. And uh, I love the doors. Look at uh, Lucy and Gru on there. But before we do that, we've got to head to the exit area for VillainCon. Of course, VillainCon's not open yet, but you will exit through retail and there is a new shop. Evil stuff this way, let's do it. Oh my gosh, not the minions cosplaying as the villains. That's hilarious. Oh, it's so fun. Oh wow, wait, the merch is cute. Okay, this is a problem. Look at him as Vector. So cool, okay. So there's lots of cool, very villain geared merch. Um, we'll of course see this all again when the ride opens. If you guys want to see a video that overviews all the villain con stuff when it opens, go ahead and let us know in the comments for sure. But it's super fun, very evil store. I assume that's where the exit of the attraction will be. Oh my gosh, do I need this water bottle? As a straw. And I did lose my water bottle. Okay, I just took pictures of literally all the merchandise for the site. And if you want to see everything, you can head over to allers.net and we will have an overview of every single piece of merchandise in the store and in Bake My Day. But I have to say, I think my favorite is this villain con collection with the yellow and the sort of like racetrack vibe. I don't know, I'm kind of obsessed with it. And if you see me in Villain Con merch, say hi, I guess. <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> okay, I'm in line at Freeze Ray Pops, uh, which is the popsicle place. And uh, they've got like craft popsicles, I'm excited to try them. Minion Pop acquired, uh, I love him. I'm gonna eat him before he starts melting. Oh, he's blue. Mmm, that banana flavor. Not overwhelmingly banana-y, the perfect amount, honestly, and it has a chocolate shell. Plus, it's super cute, super photographable. I think freeze ray Pops is definitely a winner here. Tons of amazing looking flavors. I can't wait to try them all as I hang out at Universal over the next few weeks. So, uh, I don't know, Minions Land kind of a win. Let me know in the comments what you think of all the new Despicable Me fun here at Universal Studios. We will certainly be back with another video when Villain Con Minion Blast opens up later this summer. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch Emma and I's perfect day at Universal Studios. We'll see you there.